Hey, this is Louis D. Fresh bringing it to you on a Saturday afternoon. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to September. This will air tomorrow, September 3rd, 2023. And uh, here in the United States, it's Labor Day weekend. And I uh, just finished uh, my water changes, except for two, because um, I haven't said it yet, but you really, you shouldn't change the water the same day you change your filter because of the bacteria levels. So that's why I only have two left. And this is the one that I'm gonna show you right now that I still need to change the water. But the reason for this video is a follow-up, follow-up number one to the lake. I showed you last time the lake and I showed you the, the plants, the hornwort that's growing. And I showed you the, you know, how, how the fish were, the, 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 the plants were just unbelievably blowing up more than ever before because of climate change. Now you're doing political nothing. Uh, it's just a reality. It's just, it's, it's facts. You know, the temperature has gone up on, on planet Earth. And the same thing has happened. So I, I, being that my fish are outside and my turtles, I need to do things to change with, with the times. And so that's this, what this follow-up number one is about because I noticed the plants and I noticed how they were growing and I noticed how intense it was. And um, that's what this is follow-up number one from what I saw on the lake that I showed you in the beginning of August. I love this little app that I that I acquired. It is it is cost like 25 US dollars a year, but I like it because it helps me identify things that I normally wouldn't be able to identify. Um, because as you remember, if you look back on my archives, uh, I had here, uh, right up here, I had water hyacinth growing, and water hyacinth will come back, not in this tank, it's a little preview. But I wanna show you this, the plants have really popped. They really, really have popped. I haven't trimmed anything. I haven't taken anything out. Uh, then this is called Marsh Seed Box, according to picture this Marsh Seed Box. And uh, I really didn't think it was going to grow, to be honest. I really didn't. And sure enough, there it is. It's growing. And considering how warm it's been and considering how much sun this gets, uh, I'm very, very impressed at how it has grown and has really taken over and has really created quite a shelter for my shrimp. I think you might see the shrimp there. Uh, I don't have a ton of shrimp because I do have fish and the fish are that's natural predator and they will eat some, I'm sure. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna be uh, ignorant here as you see one right there. Uh, but you know, for the most part, these, these plants have thrived in the heat. And so I'm very happy. And you can see these are my, these are the surviving mollies. My, uh, my white and silver mollies passed away. Uh, they couldn't handle the heat, but these could, the, the darker ones. And so I just wanted to share, we're not talking about the fish. We're not talking about the shrimp. We're just talking about the plants and the marsh seed box really has done well in this incredible heat that we have here in the summer of 2023. And so it's something that I had to say, hey, okay, this works. Let me go with it because it's only going to get hotter. So that is uh, sample number one on follow up to the lake on what I showed you in the beginning of August. I wanted to press the button. I wanted to continue to tell you that um, you know, as with any good uh, <laughs> freshwater fish keeper, uh, again, if you don't believe me, go to YouTube, go to the search engine and put in fish room, fish room or rooms, fish rooms. You see people with 30, 40, 50, 60 tanks uh, and they're always rearranging things, moving things, taking things out. So unfortunately, I'm no better. I don't have that many tanks, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna start a new project. And since we're talking about plants, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about uh, since I'm already preparing for that, uh, for that new project. I'm planning on getting some Chinese um, koi fish bowls that I'm gonna put some Japanese rice fish in. And uh, I'm gonna try again because I studied a little bit more on them. But this is hornwort that actually came in the mail. And you'll notice that I have a, a little, there's no filter in here, it's just a bubbler. But you'll notice that it's clean. Because I've rinsed this out at least three times, at least, because of all the dirt that comes on it. And you can still see, see there's some residue on the bottom there. Uh, always rinse out your 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 fish your fish your uh, your plants and make sure and you put in the the fresh, the conditioner and you put in the bacteria because you want it to be as as authentic as possible you don't want any of that chlorine on there so that's why I have this going like it was a fish tank and that will be for my Chinese uh, uh, koi bowls that are coming in uh, that I actually I'm getting from offer up actually this is water time. I can't lie, I've had an awful time with this tank, with this little mini uh, mini bowl, mini uh, mini pond, that's the word I use. Uh, and uh, it's it's with wild guppies, and I thought I knew what I was doing and everything was running well, and I noticed I had a whole bunch of, uh, of 
of guppies kind of pass away and I kind of wonder why and I had realized if you look it up they would need a little bit more neutral a little more alkaline water look back at my archives and you'll see I've talked I talk about pH but I took out the driftwood that was in here and the driftwood makes the water softer or more acid so I just took literally just took it out and uh, I just left this water time plant in here because uh, I'm not gonna add more guppies because I'm afraid to because uh, you keep adding and subtracting and that's how you, you, you mix up the bacteria. So I wanna see what happens. I'm hoping the few that are in here can breed and kind of fill up this, this, uh, this tank again. This mini pond, but right now I'm gonna leave it alone at least for the foreseeable future. And you see the water time is growing and it is invasive here in, uh, in Florida. So it definitely handles the heat well. And again, that's the topic is climate change and how I had to kind of go with the times and uh, I had to find plants that actually could handle the heat that we have going on here. And hopefully, like I said, uh, this will, will populate a little bit better once, uh, once it gets kind of recalibrates itself. Over here, uh, my turtles, my, a little sticker here that my wife got me here for the turtles. Uh, I just literally did a water change, as you can see. And um, I got nothing. I got no plants here. The reason I have no plants here is because I've tried numerous times. And again, the definition of insanity is trying things over and over again and hoping for a different result. Uh, that was me. Definitely insane. We got tried and tried and tried and nothing. Uh, amazingly, this little Placo here, uh, Carolyn will be thrilled to see that a Placo is actually alive here because we've tried Placos and Placos and, and they just get killed. So here's the definition of insanity actually working. And uh, so he's still, he's still there. This is a new guy. And, uh, but no, they, any plant of any plant I put in there is going to get eaten. And, and, and I know. So no plants here. But here is the big, big uh, change here. I just did a water change. I want to show you from up here. This is called Jungle Val. Jungle Val, I had, if you recall, I had a, an acarus. That is like a, it's called Brazilian seaweed. And it, it grows like crazy. And I was growing and growing and growing. And then summer came. And it was 90, 90, 90. And it's always 90 degrees here. And therefore the water here is, is pushing 90. You know, 85, uh, at least 85. And the the was, was was just being destroyed. I put Amazon swords here. Uh, they started to melt. In other words, they started to kind of deteriorate. And I just needed something to actually work in the heat. And so what worked here is the jungle valve. Jungle valve is something that, uh, is, as you can see, is like a grass, but uh, it does need root tabs because it is a it is a root feeder, and it will shoot out uh, sh uh, little little runners you see the little runners and I've actually cut a couple of runners off but they're already starting to grow back but that's good because it shows that that, it, that it's good and it's alive and and it, it and it's just it's phenomenal so that's the jungle valve here's a little another example of jungle valve you see here the runners just it's just running and uh, it, it's really really doing well and the other one that I have here is the Anubius the different kinds of Anubius I just recently got these Anubius you see it's a little bit dying out there as weird as it sounds I'm showing that to you see it's a little dying out with well, this one isn't uh, surprisingly because it's newish I, I got them last week because that there was a nice sale and anything that's new the leaves have to kind of get used to it and the plant has to get used to your water but these other Anubius that I had you see the new leaves there popping out popping out you see the leaves there popping out a little flower coming out there Anubius there and they are expensive these are expensive uh, they're probably run you anywhere at 10 20 US dollars um, yeah 10 to 20 US dollars and you may say why is it so expensive because it takes forever to grow and I have no I have nothing but time I know I'm not worried about time I'm not worried about you know so it, it it's gonna take time for it to grow but I really don't care because what I cared about is the plant living and thank God these are the plants that finally finally are living in this ridiculous heat that we have here in South Florida so I just wanted to share this with you the jungle valve and the Anubius and the water time and the hornwort and the uh, marsh seed box over there and that was it I, uh, I wanted to share it nice and sweet I wanted to show you follow-up number one to uh, the lake and what I observed uh, next time we'll do a uh, only one more uh, lake follow-up number two and it's gonna be actually a, sort of like a preview to what I've been trying to talk about for a couple of months on uh, my nano tank that I have in my home office but it's, it'll be right it won't be about it'll be just about what I observed at the lake and what's going on there and how I kind of imitated what's going on in there anyway that was Louis D fresh I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy because I like to be authentic as you know I'm, I'm a sweaty mess as you can see because I just cleaned these tanks and uh, I really wanted you to see what 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 was going on this is Louis D fresh